Okay, so this is the most hilarious thing that I have ever seen. You have Elon Musk saying something that most people knew since 2018. And that is the fact that if you rage at an account on Twitter, then the algorithm promotes you more of that content. Because even though you're raging, even though you're angry and upset, what you're basically telling the AI is that you like interacting with that. So the AI goes, oh, so you like being upset? Well, here's some more accounts that you can rage at. That's how it works. And not only that, this is how journalists make their living. Like, for example, when you have like CNN going, uh, air conditioners are sexist. Normal people see that article. They get upset. They get angry. They go like, Why is the media in my country so batshit insane? Why are these people that are telling everyone else how to think so damn crazy? And then they start sharing that article around and they're going like, look, look what CNN is saying. Look, look how insane they are. But this generates traffic. This generates clicks. This generates engagement. So what does CNN do? They push more articles of the same. It's the same uh, with, uh, oh, look, uh, the Young Turks have made another video with uh, some cops using their authority on a suspect. And then everyone is like taking that video and is shedding it around, right? Like the idea that outrage sells is not something that Elon Musk came up with. But for some reason, journalists are shocked. They're perplexed about this. It's like, oh my God, like people sell outrage? Really? And you have, uh, you know, like for someone who claims to foster civil discourse while acknowledging that social media is bad for people, you sure want to maximize engagement. Like, first of all, the algorithm, according to Elon Musk, is going to be made open source, right? But secondly, it is literally the business model of every single company to want to retain clients. I, I don't think this is something astonishing. Like, like imagine if you run a business the opposite way. Like running a business where you don't want to retain clients. How long do you think you're going to last until you go bankrupt? Yeah, it's literally every single social media's interest to keep you on the freaking site. Like every website, on, it's how the internet works. This is not about Elon Musk. Like, the internet wants to keep you there. Now, if you're a person, right, because this is the thing, they're showing to these people a mirror, right? If you're a person that wants to see cat videos, the algorithm reflects that, and it shows you more cat videos. If you're a person that likes to have civil discourse on the internet, the algorithm reflects that, and it shows you more civil discourse. If you're a person that likes to rage like a twat at the internet and be the angry man yelling at the sky... The algorithm is going to show you more clouds. Like the algorithm is there to help you. It literally depends on what type of person you are and the type of content you engage with. Which is why it's so hilarious that a couple of uh, months ago when Elon Musk purchased Twitter, you had all these journalists and blue check marks coming up and being upset that, oh my god, I'm seeing so many right-wingers in my feed. Because they were having dumb takes and you had like some people that corrected them. So they started engaging with those people and the algorithm showed the more similar people, right? So this is why they were having so many right-wingers in their feeds. Because normally they do not interact with right-wingers. I mean, this is how it is on Twitter usually. Like, you, you already have, like, groups of people. Like, if you're not interacting with leftists, you don't even think that leftists exist on Twitter. But if you start interacting with them, you realize, oh my god, why are they so many? <laughs> and uh, look, 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 look. Hey, like, they, they genuinely, like, shock me. Like the blue check marks, they're shocking me in the sense that they do not understand even what it's explained to them in a very simple manner. They're like, so wait, am I supposed to say that Kyle Rittenhouse is a decent human being so I see less of him? How can you not understand this? No. If you tell Kyle Rittenhouse that he's a decent human being, you are still engaging with him. The, the, the algorithm is going to show you more of Kyle Rittenhouse because you engaged. The only solution is to not engage with him if you don't want to see him. Or at least engage with critics of him. And then you're going to get more people criticizing him. If you engage with people that like Kyle, support Kyle, you're going to get more of that. How, I, I don't know, like, why is it so difficult to reach these people? I, do they not speak English? Like, I'm a Romanian. I have to learn English as a second language. And even I understand better than them. And I'm not even someone that knows how to code. What's the possibility of reducing hate and maybe rewarding intelligent, grounded interaction? Well, I'll tell you what the possibility is, but you probably won't like the answer. The possibility isn't top-down. The possibility is bottom-up. The possibility is to teach people 
to engage with more wholesome content. The problem is that some people don't want to engage with wholesome content. The problem is that you have people, and, and it's not the left-wing or right-wing issue. It's like literally a peasantry issue. Like, some people enjoy going on the internet to blow off steam. Now, you're saying that they shouldn't? Why? Why do you say they shouldn't? Like, how are they harming anyone? If someone goes on the internet just to argue with people, you're saying that that shouldn't happen? But, like, there's people in real life that go out to argue with others, right? Like, like there's people who go out on a pint, and they, they have a, a pint with Father O'Malley, and as they're at the table drinking beer, they have arguments with other people. They're not throwing hands. They're not necessarily shouting or yelling at each other, although sometimes they might. But, like, the idea of having public debate and people just disagreeing with each other, sometimes, even going a little bit further, th th that's part of the human experience, right? Like, wh what exactly do you want Twitter to be like? Do you want it to be a reflection of something that's not real? Like, do you want everyone to pretend, like, like children playing in the sand with mommy and daddy over there in order to make sure that they're not saying any naughty words? And even if that's what you want, do you think the rest of the people want this? Like, if you were to put it up to a vote, do you think, like, the majority of people want this? No, you're a grown-ass adult. If you don't want to see the type of content you don't want to see, don't interact with it. I do not click the heart button on a single sports news segment. Because I know how dangerous that is. And by the way, uh, the same happens on YouTube. Like, if you watch <clears throat> The Young Turks on YouTube, or you watch a CNN video, you're going to be recommended a lot of CNN videos you're going to be recommended a lot of Young Turks videos, right? So if you don't want to watch that content, then you need to log in anonymously, like just log off of your account and watch that. I know people that are YouTubers and they have three or four separate accounts to watch stuff because they know how the algorithm works and they do not, they need it compartmentalized for their different channels. Like if, if you want to make an anime video, you go on your account for anime. If you want to make a political video, you go on your account for politics. I know it sounds difficult, but like, hey, this is part of our jobs, right? Like, you, you need to compartmentalize it in a way so that you get exposed to the recent news that's coming from that particular segment. Imagine doing this in the real offline world. Imagine telling someone to stop bothering you to get out of your personal space only to have offensive, menacing behavior continue to increase. This literally does happen in the real world. If you have an author that writes a very offensive book and a lot of people disagree with it, but they buy it anyway in order to hate read it, do you know what happens? He's going to make a sequel. Even though people hate it, he's going to double down. If CNN writes an article that is completely batshit crazy and insane, but people share it around and they cause engagement, CNN is going to write more of that. If someone makes a product, I don't know, like someone makes moldy bread and people buy the moldy bread just to shame the store owner. It's like, oh, look, look how poor quality this bread is, but they buy the bread nonetheless, the store is going to make more of that. It's literally how business works. But apparently, you know, you have people on Twitter that, I don't know, like they live in a fantasy world. They, they do not understand even the basic idea of economics. It, it surprises me. And, and the thing that surprises me the most is that these people are lecturing how other people should live. You know, they're, they're trying to give you their moral values well, they don't even understand, like, how the world works at the basic fundamental level. Anyway, right, let me know what you guys think, and as usual, I will see you in the comment section. Take care.